Now, if I could just get this thing to overheat, that'd be great. Oh, this will work. You know, I really didn't drop the camera because that would be crazy, you know what I mean? Um, this box for this ZV-E1 for over $2,000 camera, it's kind of sad. Like, when they shipped this to me, I literally thought they gave me the wrong box. Uh, but it's got it on there and everything else. So, we'll tell you what's in it. We'll go from there. So, everybody else has unboxed it, so I'm not going to go crazy on this one. But pretty much, there's a strap in here. There's the camera itself. It's got a lens, or sorry, it's got a cap on the top of it. The battery I put in there already, it comes with one. Um, you have to charge it with inside of the camera because there's no external charger. There's a USB cable, a windscreen, a little fluffy that you put on there that I have not put on there uh, because I'll probably use the external mic or the internal microphone and I will lose this and I will never find it. Uh, it's USB-C and a bunch of instructions. So nothing crazy. Uh, main thing is camera, super, super light. Uh, should you get this camera? Quick and dirty. No, God, please, no, no, no. No! Don't buy this camera because you don't need it. Stick with the ZV-E10 or even the new uh, A6700. I don't know if that's the right number, but that's probably a better camera for the price. Why did I buy this camera over my ZV-E10? Uh, number one, ZV-E10 is APS-C, great camera. We're recording on it right now. This is a full frame, so I had to get a few different lenses. I'll show you why. I used some old lenses on mine, had a bunch of vignetting, but I'll prove that to you. Uh, this one, low light capability on cruise ship, great. Uh, also has AI tracking, also has a great quality image. And matter of fact, we'll record the rest of this video from this camera. So here we go. In all honesty, you don't need two cameras. I got two cameras. I have the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8 on this camera. It looks probably great right now, but that's why I got it. So I had low lighting capability, it has AI tracking, all of these things. But the price is not worth it if you don't have the means to do that. I basically went from a BMW camera with a ZV-E10 to a Ferrari, very unnecessary but the videos will look really, really good. Is that what you think, you think? And I'll show you the capabilities of that. Now you're probably gonna say, don't you have a cameraman now? Because you're moving pretty good and it's tracking you pretty well. Well, let me tell you, there is no cameraman to be seen in this house. Even my wife is gone. I'm here by myself. Sage isn't even here, our dog. You don't hear her bustling around. Is she my cameraman? Could be, but her paws are so thick and so, abrasive that I would never let her touch the camera. Either way, this AI tracking, it'll track in a small, or sorry, a large crop, big, medium crop, or even the whole screen. But either way, it feels like somebody's recording. And maybe she is. I mean, I can't disprove or prove that Sage isn't behind the camera. But if you see my golden retriever, she's very lazy, obese, and there's no way she would be a great cameraman. I'm sorry, Sage. Okay, I'm trying to shoot on both of them at the same time. ZVE10, ZVE1. So it's trying to, it's really hard to look at both of them at the same time. So I'll look down the middle here. So either one, we're comparing the ZVE10 quality to the ZVE1 quality. I got a 20 millimeter 1.8 on the ZVE1 and I have a 11 millimeter 1.8 on the ZVE10. Can you tell a difference in the image quality? Probably not, but either way, the image quality should look great on both of these. Set on the same setting, this is great lighting. So can you tell a difference? Can you spot the difference in both of the lenses? Probably not, I can't. But either way, I'm gonna keep both cameras like I've told you. But the ZV-E10 is way cheaper than the ZV-E1. Okay, this is going to be the lights on and you can see 
what it looks like on the ZV-E1 and then the ZV-E10. Okay, so I have both of them on now. We got the ZV-E1 on one side and the ZV-E10 on the other side. I'll label them both on there. Uh, the ZV-E1's uh, got an ISO of 64,000. The ISO's maxed out on the ZV-E10 at 32,000. Uh, can you tell the difference in the low light? Literally, there's the smallest amount of light back there. Uh, the ZV-E1 is literally a low light monster. Uh, pretty much there is hardly any light in this uh, gym and studio right now besides a little bit creeping in in the back uh, from some natural light and it's cloudy and rainy outside. So how does this look? Can you tell a difference at all? So none of the steady shots are on right now. So I'm trying to look in the center and see which one to look at. So this is a lot harder to do than it seems holding both of them at the same time. So either way, this is me walking without any steady shot on whatsoever. So we'll do another one with steady shot on and dynamic steady shot on. This is me walking with not pointing the camera at myself, trying to just walk normally and see what both of them look like without any steady shot. It shouldn't look too crazy here because I'm just trying my best and I'm walking through the gym. This by far is likely my preferred method of doing vlogs is active steady shot just because of how wonderfully good it is whenever you're, you're holding the camera out in front of you. That way it's not as bad, but holding two cameras at once is a lot harder than it looks. You know what I mean? So how does this look? Active steady shot on both. Here's active steady shot walking through the gym hopefully this is not as shaky on your screen but i will see whenever i post this so can you tell difference at all whenever i'm walking just with the camera pointing forward here is the final test so on the zve1 there is a dynamic steady shot uh, there is no dynamic steady shot on the zve10 but Either way, uh, the active steady shot on the ZV-E10 is pretty stable, but the dynamic is way, way better on the ZV-E1. You cannot use clear image zoom. I tried a thousand times to try to do that, but either way, it crops in quite a bit, uh, but it is stable, almost gimbal-like. So that's the biggest advantage ever. You know what I mean? And here is last test with dynamic Stabilization on the ZV-E1 with the highest stabilization possible on the ZV-E10, which is active steady shot. So you can have a good look and see what the difference is. I'm trying to hold the ZV-E10 as steady as possible. Got more of a shake on the ZV-E1. So I don't know if you can tell the difference there. So this is an APS-C lens, the 11 millimeter 1.8. With active stabilization, as you can see, there is quite a bit of vignetting. Um, the way to get around this is you put it in dynamic and you zoom in, but you can't use clear image zoom. And the biggest pain in the ass is every time you turn the camera off, you gotta zoom back in. If it kept the zoom, that would be great. And this lens is very lightweight. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the 11 millimeter with dynamic active stabilization it's about a, what a 1.3 1.4 zoom it has to be a digital zoom uh, or it will not work very well but i'm trying to see if i can get any vignetting here granted you could also fix it in post if you need to uh, if i zoom out here uh, and i move around too much you'll probably see some of that vignetting but that's not too terribly bad to fix especially if this lens is really really um, tiny and lightweight so you can probably see that vignetting right there the battery is a lot bigger it uses the npfz 100 which is usually sony's bigger batteries and 
most of the time this will last me an hour and a half to two hours. My ZV-E10, I would be lucky if it lasts an hour and if it got to 30%, I'd be like, it's gonna die immediately. If it's on 30% here, I probably still got about 45 minutes of recording time. So that's a huge advantage for me. So normally I will use these cameras for vlogging and everything. So this is the audio coming out of the ZV-E1, which is right a few feet away from me. So the audio is probably gonna be lower than I would normally have it and I don't have my mic on. I put the ZV-E10 exactly right beside of the ZV-E1. This is the audio coming out of that one. Of course, this is a few feet back. I would be normally vlog vlogging with this. So they're side by side. You tell me which one sounds better. This is the ZV-E1, mic check one, two, three. This is the ZV-E10. My check one, two, three. There is this new feature for B-roll that I'll probably use. It puts these black bars above your head and down there makes it look cinematic. Either way, you can watch me do this and fail a front squat cinematically. Who's this camera for? People who vlog, content creators, you're gonna record for basically 10 minutes less. You'll probably go 30 minutes or less. This is not for podcasts. It's not for streaming. It was never designed for that. That's like literally taking a ping pong paddle to a tennis match. Don't do that, people. Of course it's gonna overheat. Of course it's not gonna work because it's not its intended purpose. Stop complaining and bitching about it. Me bitching about it is still bitching, so either way, it sounds funny. Who is this camera not for? Obviously people who are gonna film long, long time. Does it have two SD cards? No, do you need two SD cards? Maybe. Do you drive with two keys when you uh, get in your car because you're worried about the other key failing? Probably not, so quit bitching about it. Are you worried about overheating in the African safari? Then probably get a FX3, FX30. Long story short, you want to take pictures all the time and make them look really, really good. Probably don't get this camera because it still takes great pictures, but at the same time, it's more of a video camera. And I tell people that all the time. So in conclusion here, buy the ZV-10. It's the more budget friendly option. The lenses are cheaper. You're going to get a great image out of it. You won't be upset about it. It's the best beginning camera. I'm going to keep it forever and keep it as my B-roll camera. It's an amazingly great camera. If you have the means and you want the best camera for videography, videoing lightweight, get the ZV-E1. Everything's gonna be more expensive, but you'll get some of the best image quality that there is possible. So take that for a grain of salt. Either way, thanks for watching my video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll respond to everything.